So just to let you know, you know, I'm like super extra. Oh, I know. <laughs> I was like, you've seen it. You've seen it. Like, and that's fine. We're going to roll with it. <laughs> STEM Queens is a web based series for young women of color, showing them successful, interesting, amazing black women who are killing the STEM game. Hello, and welcome to STEM Queens. Today, we have Sierra Sibbles from the Applied Physics Laboratory. Welcome, Sierra. Hey, Jatia, my fellow nuclear engineer. Yay, black girls, nuclear engineers, hey. So Sierra, can you tell us a little bit about where you grew up and where you live now? Okay. So I'm originally from Chesapeake, Virginia. For those of you that don't know, this is the 757 area. It's Southeast Virginia. Um, where I actually grew up is more of a rural town. So we lived on nine acres. We we're like five minutes from North Carolina. And where I live now is in Laurel, Maryland, in this area that they like to call Fulton, which is kind of in between Baltimore and DC. What is the last song you listened to? What was your, what's your jam? The last? Oh, I've been listening to Chloe and Hallie a lot. Really? I've, I've never listened to them. What do you, you know? Song well, do you like the reason to? I started listening to them is because of NPR Tiny Desk. So I don't know if you've seen their Tiny Desk series. You know, I with COVID, they have at home Tiny Desk. And people, I've been hearing people talk about Chloe and Holly a bunch. And I saw their Tiny Desk and I was like, wow, they're good. So then I just went back and listened to Ungodly Hour and I've just been playing that album on repeat. So we are going to get to know a little bit more about Miss Sierra, Dr. Sierra, if you're nasty, um, <laughs> in a segment that I call Sierra's Level Up. So okay. first question, Rihanna or Beyonce? Rihanna. Oh, all right. <laughs> Next question, wig, weave, or natural? Natural, but I'm moving towards wigs. Next question, some, some people will struggle with this one. Megan the Stallion or Cardi B? You know, I like Megan. I really like Megan. I think she's a round away girl. Okay. Now I have to ask you, how are your Megan knees? How are your knees? You know, I'm not, I'm, I can't. I try, but I be getting stuck. I can get down, but the coming up, I don't know how she doing that. <laughs> Dancing or singing? So I definitely say singing, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. No, you, you said that you sung in a choir, so. <laughs> now that part I can't do. <laughs> Me. You're not gonna, you're not gonna hit us with one note? <laughs> I'm too shy for that. <laughs> That's why I sing in a choir, so I can hide behind other people's voices. <laughs> okay, so dancing and singing, you actually meant neither. All yeah. right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Please include right. <laughs> oh, I will. Because whoever said singing, I was like, go ahead. Go, go, let me hear it. I should prepare myself. <laughs> Who has the best biscuit? Is it KFC, Chick-fil-A, Popeyes, or Hardee's for you? For me, it's Hardee's because they have the best flavor. A lot of people sleep on Hardee's. So we are going to move on to our next segment. This is one of my favorites. It is called Yeah. So, Dr. Sibbles, are you a sovereign of science, a tech arena, an engineering empress, or a marchioness of math? I am an engineering empress. Yes, <laughs> a fellow engineering empress. I yep. love it. How, how did you claim your throne, girl? I wanted to be a chef. Um, as you may or may not know, being a chef encompasses a lot of chemistry. In high school, taking a chemistry class, really loved it. And I had a chemistry teacher say, you know, you should think about being a chemical engineer instead of being a chef. And for me, I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. So let me look into it. And when I did, I got really interested, applied to different universities, ended up going to MIT. And when I got there, you know, the, the discussion was, hey, if you wanna be a chemical engineer, you're not gonna really get to work on things at the atomic level. Maybe you wanna be a nuclear engineer. And so that's how I ended up where I am today. Oh, I, I just went to MIT. Um, <laughs> MIT is a really hard school to get into. So you must have been really good at math and science. I mean, how did you end up at MIT? A lot of people from my high school were going to Virginia Tech, VCU, UVA, you know, staying local within the area, especially black people. I had a teacher say, 
you know, these schools are good. You have over a 4.0 GPA, but they're not good enough for you. And he kept pushing me to apply to higher standard schools. What's your teacher's name who pushed you and encouraged you? Give him a shout out. His name is Robert Harrell and he just retired. Thank you very much for pushing our girl to excellence. Yep. What made you want to get a PhD? During my MIT experience, I realized that I had a passion for teaching. So from that experience, I decided that I wanted to be a professor and that's what motivated me to get the PhD. But during my PhD process, I realized that I love research, but I don't want to run a research lab. So that is how I landed at a place like APL because I'm able to do a variety of things without worrying about the, the details of being a professor. And what do you do at APL? Tell us a little bit more about what you do at APL. Okay, so APL is a university affiliated research center. A lot of the work we do is affiliated with uh, the government. So, you know, a lot of it we can't talk about, but my research specifically focuses on how does radiation interact with materials? How can we use simulations to examine that? You have a unique situation where you actually work with other Black female nuclear engineers, right? Y'all got a little click, right? Tell us about the click. Got a little click. Okay. So it's me, Marina, and Jamie. We were all, we're, we were each the first Black women to get our PhDs from the respective universities of MIT and University of Tennessee, Knoxville in nuclear engineering. So I am super proud of your click that you guys got going. So props and kudos to y'all. Thank you very much for telling us more about your engineering empire. We love it. We love to hear it. Black girl. Yes. We are going to talk about your queen pain. You can throw down in the kitchen, right? Yep. <laughs> so we talked about biscuits earlier and you had a very strong opinion about your biscuits. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so tell us more. Baking in general, there's a specific art, and we talked about chemistry. It's all about the chemistry of the ingredients. When it comes to biscuits, I feel like there's a few things that people really need to understand. Okay, well, let me get my pen. Hold on, because, you know, I don't cook. So I need to take really, really good notes. So the steps to making biscuits start like this. You want to get all your dry ingredients. You want to get your butter set up, and then you want to get your liquid. So you put all the dry ingredients together, then you cut your butter into the dry ingredients. Then you add your buttermilk. Then you mix that all up. You pour that out. It's gonna be kind of crumbly. You wanna pour that out and try to press it all together. Roll it out, fold it over, roll it again, fold it over, roll it again, fold it one last time. And then you wanna get your biscuit cutter and cut your biscuits. Put them in a pan. I usually line it with parchment paper. Put it in a pan, make sure your biscuits are touching, and bake, and that's it. You wanna brush a little buttermilk over top, a little butter at the end, that's it. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> it's really not as hard. You just gotta make sure you have a few little tips. The biggest tip is using cold butter. I typically use butter that's frozen. Um, and I, you can cut the butter up if you want to. I feel like that's too much trying to cut something that's frozen. So I grate my butter. Thanks for that. No problem. Hopefully y'all try the biscuits and y'all like them like I do. <laughs> well, look, you got, you got the gift, you got to use it. Thank you so much, Dr. Civil. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Jatia, Dr. Jatia. <laughs> I love it. Doctor, yes, doctor. <laughs> Do you have any advice for our viewers about becoming a STEM queen? So my biggest piece of advice is that you have to be confident in yourself and what you know. A lot of times when you're in environments where you look like the only one or you're the only female, the only minority, imposter syndrome can sink in. But at the end of the day, you know what you know and no one can take that away from you. I don't get it out, get it out. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right. So everybody meet Beta. Beta? Yep, like the particle. <laughs> nice. How cute is that? And he's a pug or? He's a Frenchie. You was making all that noise. Now you get on camera and you ain't got nothing to say. Shut up, Bobby. Look, Beta, say hello. <laughs> he just woke up. <laughs> he's yeah, a